Talking to you, recording machine. Shindaka, Mr. Shindaka here, and it's 4.1, solving for angles, lengths, and distances. So you guys all have this sheet, right? Okay. Let's go through the first page. This page should be reviewed from yesterday. The other day. So in this chapter, you're going to work with what we call trigonometric ratios to solve problems. We'll have sine, cosine, and tangent based on the idea that the hypotenuse is opposite the right angle. The opposite side we refer to is always opposite whatever you call theta or the x or the unknown. Or sometimes you'll say that's 16 degrees. And adjacent is the side that's right beside it and is attached to a right angle. It's not the hypotenuse. Now that's something from yesterday we saw. And we took a look at this. This is important. We did that yesterday. We did them one at a time. We looked at them, right? You will have this on tests. I actually have it on that poster over there underneath my handlers. You can probably read it. Sky, you said you can, or it wasn't you, Callie, I asked. But can you, you can read that even from that end of the room, okay? So you have that. I'll probably print it on your exams and stuff like that, too. We got to know how to use this. Calculator will give you those decimal numbers, and we learned how to use those. Now, one thing we saw in the first chapter, you may remember, you weren't here at the first chapter, but there's a sine negative 1, cos negative 1, tan negative 1 on your butt, or calculator. There's those buttons. What is that? That's where you go backwards, and you get the, like, the, given the sides, what is the angle? That'll be new today a little bit. And the other thing that isn't really new, because I know you've done this before, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the uh, Pythagorean theorem. So that's what we're looking at in this lesson. This is really a bit more of the same stuff. I'm going to work one out with you, two out. Use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing sign. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But the important thing about that is, I'm going to label it. When I have this formula, I like to put the c squared here. I, I like to put the c squared first. It doesn't matter if you don't. But on my diagram above, what you, which could be my a, b, and c? Really what's important is which one's c. The a and b can be switched, flip-flopped. The h, the hypotenuse, has to be side c. The other two, A and B, that doesn't matter so much. Now, the reason why I went with A and B this way, incidentally, is often in geometry you'll see diagrams where angle A will be opposite side A, angle B will be opposite side B. That's the only reason why I did it that way. The math, though, works out the same if you had the small B and A mixed up. It doesn't matter. There's no correct way to do A and B. So, with that, I'm going to replace now. And actually, I recommend everybody on their diagrams actually labels which they think A, B, and C is. Then the next step is to actually take your numbers. And the letter C, I'm going to replace with the letter H squared because that's what I have on the diagram. The letter A, I'm going to replace with 7.5 and, and then 15.3 for the B. Remember how to use my calculator. Yours has a square in button. You can do that. Otherwise, you just type in 7.5 times 7.5. Add that to 15.3 times 15.3. Let the calculator do the work for you. What you've got 56.5. Fifty-six and a quarter plus two thirty-four oh nine. It should come out to be two hundred ninety point three four. Now, that's not exactly what you want. I'll wait for a second for you to catch up. You're good with this, right? Eh? Keanu? 
How do you undo an H squared? There's a button on your calculator. Has the word square in it. You take the somebody help this girl. She needs to phone a friend. Who is it? What do you undo a square with? Well, how do you undo a square on a calculator? I put this down. This button. What does that mean to you? It's what you use. Do you know what the words are though for that? Square root. Yes, thanks, Faith. Too. You take the square root. What that does is un you can undo a square with it. You can use that button on uh, the 29 or 290 decimal three four. So okay, that's hard to do in your head. So again, you can use that button, and you've got as you said. 16.9, you said? 15.2? Three. Well, let me see here. So, I'm going to hit. The order depends on your calculator. Some you had to put the number 290 first and then hit the square root button. My calculator I'm using today, I hit the square root button 290, that's one, three, four. And I, yeah, I get 17. Do you get 17 now? Just try it out. You do? So a 17.0, like you said. If you want to put the point zero in there, one decimal place would be fine. Centimeters. Huh. Let me just do this a little bit. Right. B is a little different because it's going to have some subtraction in it. Get screwed here. We can do it. We're smart kids. We's good people. We're smart. So what are we going to do? Once again, I'm going to start with writing down the formula. And I'm going to label this diagram. I'm going to call this A and this B and this C. It didn't matter which one I called A or B, but the C really does matter. Once I do that, I'm cooking with gas. You know, lady. You know it. So, with the letter C, I'm going to replace it with 9.3. The letter A squared, I'm going to call it S squared. That's not a 5, it's an S. My S's sometimes look like fives. The letter B I'm going to replace with 4.3 and square. You see the difference between this one and the other one? You're looking for B squared and B, or not B, I guess in this case, what I call A, S squared. And the S is not alone. So the first thing you have to do is probably. Use your calculator. Find out what 9.3 squared is and what 4.3 is squared. And then we'll write it down in the exact same spots. I'll let you write it down. I'm going to ask a few of you for some answers. What you got for 9.3? I'm sorry? Work it out. And young miss, you do have something for me yet? Sure. We're going to work with 86.49. That's what the 9.3 squared turns into. Equals S squared plus, and the 4.3, Tiana? 18.49. Lady, there we are. Now, how do we get the S squared all alone? This is where, you ever remember way back when, grade 8 or something like this? You ever hear something like, what you do to the left side, you got to do the right side with algebra? Maybe you didn't hear that. You ever hear a rule like, if you subtract something on the left side, you got to subtract it on the right side when you're solving problems? Some of you are familiar with this. Are you familiar with it? 
It's okay that you aren't. We're gonna we're here to learn. So, so does it make sense? Here's what we're thinking. If you're if you want to get s squared along this our whole goal, right? Okay. Well, what you got to think is the problem with s squared is that it, it's got this plus des, or plus 18.49. What is the opposite of adding 18.49? Subtract. Does it make sense on this side alone, if I subtracted 18.49 from S squared plus 18.49, so what I'm thinking is, is if I took this minus 18.49, you don't have to draw this in here, I'm just showing you how you think through this, that would zero it out on that side and you'd just be left with S squared, correct? But as I said before, if you do something to the left side, you've got to do it to, or in this case, to the right side, you've got to do it to the left side as well. You can't just take a number out and make it disappear. You have to subtract it on this side as well. I'm going to return, this is sort of what you're thinking. Does this make sense? It doesn't make sense to you, but I'll work with you to make sure you make it work. You've heard of this before? Okay. So on the left side, I'm now going to have 86.49 minus 18.49. The blue stuff I did above was just to show you what you're thinking. You actually, it's best if you do write those things in there, but you don't need to. It's equal to S squared. Some people just think of it as, if you got this here, just do the opposite on the other side. And they say, well, if it's plus 18, I'm going to subtract 18 on the other side. As long as you realize why it works and how to do it. Now, 86.49, 18.49, when I subtract those guys, I get 68. Now, that's just a subtraction factor. Point two. Sounds sweet. Eight point two, and that's millimeters because that's what was on the drawing in the first place. Is equal to that side as seventeen. Circle this and two is a middle. That went. I'm going to skip this your turn because it would be for you. I'll wait for a second here. And I'll get to the newer stuff as well. This is stuff that's new for today. Some of you have seen it before, and that's great. You should have, but if it's your first time through, it's going to be tough. Okay, so this is an example right below it that you can try later on. What about this? We're not going to do these two examples because you have instruction from the other day. When I say to find the tan of B, I guess, you know what, I will do this, sorry. Because we haven't done it exactly like this. So I'm going to write this down. Tan of B is equal to, you look on your chart or whatever, it's opposite over adjacent. I'm looking underneath the ampers. Then, you got to examine your diagram. Angle B, here, what's opposite? 15.3. Then, 7.5 is my adjacent side, right? So, that's what I'm going to toss in here, and that's the answer to the question. Tangent of B is equal to the opposite, or 15.3. You can leave the centimeters out on one of these because they're going to divide up. The adjacent is 7.5. Then you actually take your calculator and divide that. 15.3 divided by 7.5. Because fractions can represent division. You will get a number. 2.04. Good. 
So, you know how the calculator yesterday was giving us those decimal numbers? Well, this is the other way around doing it. We're making them up right from the train. Now, T and S on the next diagram. I'm not going to do them sine of T. You know what? I will do this. We'll do this. We've got time. For this one, the sine of t, if you look on your diagrams, the sine function is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay? And look at the letter t here. Put the two decimal numbers together into a fraction and come up with an answer. I'll give you a second or two to do that. And then we'll be good. I'm just doing it myself here. Did you get it going on? Okay. Right. Which is from T, which is opposite, which is hypotenuse. This is opposite, so that's what you put it on top. And T divided by the fraction. The hypotenuse is always pressing this way. Then you use a calculator. Okay. I checked in on one student. You guys get this too. And I'm getting 0 0.46, 0.462. Yeah? What if you did this cosine of S? Well, that's adjacent. Did anyone already do that? You'll find something right away. Hope you do anyways. Cosine of S then. No, 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 just put your open way in. Same numbers. So one's called a cosine for a Oh, why am I putting the word I thought? Nine point. They're supposed to be the same numbers on the same trend. One's a sine though, and one's a cosine, and they're different angles. So that's not a coincidence, that's the way it should work. Why? Huh. Just think about this. This is why it works this way. The opposite side of T is 4.3, whereas the, uh, the side that's beside S, the adjacent side, is also 4.3. So doesn't it make sense that these two things should have the same value? They do. And even on a calculator, if you if you got two angles from the same uh, triangle, and you put in like one is uh, the sine of 20 degrees and you get a decimal number, 
you'll get the exact same decimal number for the matching uh, cosine. Cosine of 70 degrees. Just trust me, you do. If you see that there, you're going to do those kind of things, ratios on these questions. But the other new thing that I want you to try is the uh, find the inverse of tangent to find one angle and then find angle B. This uses a few facts from yesterday too that they add up to 180. So angle A, and I, I even said use tangent. Later on, you're going to have to look at angle A and say, In. Why would I use tangent on angle A there? Well, what two sides do we have? We have what's the opposite of it, 7.5. We have what's the side that is adjacent to it. And so you think, what, are the, what is the only trig function that uses both opposite and adjacent? You look it up, and it's tangent. That's why we're using tangent. On this. Now, this tan negative 1 button now is a little different. Think of it this way. If tan, and this is what we have of A, is equal to opposite over adjacent, right? And you could use your calculator to get that. Wait. This tan negative 1 button, what does that do for you, though? So this is what we already know. What's new is that this angle A, so big A stands for this angle right there, okay? A is equal to, how do you undo a tangent? Well, you use the tan negative 1. It's called reciprocal identity, the inverse, I mean, operation, inverse operation, my mistake there, of the opposite over the adjacent. Now, I'm writing out the full formula here, but typically you're going to just jump in like this. A equals inverse of tan. So that tan negative 1. It's the second function on most of your calculators on the tan one. Then you're going to look it up. The opposite side is 7.5. The adjacent side is 15.3. Now what? Some people, before they get to there, might have already done the division on it. I think it's 0.49. Let me type it in there. Sure. 7.5 divided by 15.3. Bingo. Shindaka nailed it. Decimal 49. That's what all I did was just what I have in blue here. Though. I'm not using the calculator button for the tan thing yet. I've got to figure that out first. So A equals tan button. Uh, with a decimal four nine, I could put four nine zero as a one, but that would you're fine with just forty nine. Typically, though, we keep about three places behind the decimal, or three digits, anyways, for measurement. Now, uh, depending on your brand of calculator, you either hit second function tan and then 0.49, or else you do the 0.49 first. What do you get? Well, oh, tangent. That's for 49. I got 26 degrees. Did you? Good try. Make sure you can get 26 degrees. This angle here is 26 degrees. That's a that. That's what we just figured out. How do you find angle B then? Got some of our old school tricks from yesterday. Sometimes I put a little angle symbol in front of that. You could just have B though, that's fine. What's B going to be equal to? What do they all add up to? 180. We did this yesterday. Minus the 90 for the right triangle corner. Minus the 26 degrees every time. 
180 minus 90, that's 90. 90 minus 26, 64. You can do the calculator thing. So B equals 64 degrees. Huh. Well, doesn't that just dip the donut in the tea? Eh? You can try these. And then there's some real toughies there, too. Some extra step questions. You know what? I'm going to save these ones for uh, the next day or so. Try them after you've done the assignment questions. Because, oh, that's pretty tough, too. Do this first page of the assignment after you try the your terms, okay? This should be more than enough to do. Thank you, you guys. For your work here.